Welcome back. You're watching the number one home improvement YouTube channel in the entire world. Not sure how long ago it was. I showed you how I built a doorway just around the corner at the bottom of the stairs. I've got another doorway that I have to plug up with an actual door. We've got some restrictions though. We've got some height restrictions. I'm gonna have to cut the jams and the door down to fit in this this hole here. This here and this here are not an equal two by four wall difference. Would be nice. I could just build a two by four wall that went straight across here, flush on this side, and then comes flush on this side. Doesn't work that way either. The doorway is also a half inch narrower at the top than at the bottom. Pretty common. Uh, maybe not, not quite that much, but you will have variation between the bottom, middle, and top in most doors and windows. Well, this doorway is uh, basically racked this way so i've got my top and bottom plate already cut two studs on the side here so i'm basically just gonna nail on the floor a rectangle get that in place and then i'm gonna build the rest of the wall in place so i make sure that it's square <laughs> Perfect. Both sides of this wall are finished. There's no studs over there. When you laminate something together, it's permanent. It would have to rip the drywall off of the wall. When you're doing remodels and stuff like this, you have to uh, work in unconventional ways. A lot of the projects are unconventional. <laughs> This will give you an idea of how out of square this this doorway is. So we can fit, you know, a decent finger in there. Go all the way up to the top. Can't even get your pinky in. And that is plumb. Some other things to consider is the uh, the floor surface that your jams are going to rest on. Uh, it's not flat. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not level. So you may have to cut one leg a little longer or shorter than the other. If you cut that one that side too short or too long, your your door frame can be racked up or down. That's something you can do when you get it in place. Uh, you can trim it, but you can't really add it back in to raise it up because it could be sagging uh, once you get it in here and your door won't close right. And then you have to raise this side up to get your to get your clearance up top to make sure your reveal on the doorway looks perfect. So that's something that I always pay attention to. 79 and 3 eighths. Let's check again. Let's just double check again. I don't want to buy a door. 79. And three eighths, it's gonna give me 79 and three eighths. Let's do it. We're in the bathroom that I installed the floor, the baseboard, and the shoe mold on. What else I've done in here? Got lots more planned for this bathroom. Uh, this is kind of like my little workshop in this house. It's where I do all my cuts, contains all the sawdust in here. Just uh, gonna cut these legs. Only have to cut about three inches off. Not even three inches. Not very good lighting in this, this area here. Just gonna zip these off with these cut lines. 
it will cut right straight through the door, that's fine. Because the next step is to remove the jams from the door with the hinge pins and the little plastic uh, bolt thing and the doorknob there, doorknob hole over there. And then I have to cut down the actual door. The reason I have it all put together like this is it makes it easy to cut these jams when it's still attached to the door. I took the little plug out of the doorknob. This goes into the jam and it keeps the door and the jam connected. If you leave it in there, sometimes it can be hard to get out. So what I'm gonna do is go in through the hole that way and then I'm gonna stick this back in the hole and check my reveals. <laughs> Looks so good. Got enough room for trim. Reveals look good. Not bad at all. Well, we're back at the workshop. Gonna paint that door panel or that door slab. It's not much of a slab. I'm gonna show you the inside of that hollow core door and you probably will be surprised. Unless you do this stuff often, you're gonna be surprised. So this is the paint gun. It still has the same paint as it did for the last door that I painted. Um, all I had to do was peel off the little bit of dried paint on the tip and needle. I do remember that it was running a little thick on the last last time I used this. So I got a little bit of water here. I'm gonna open this up, thin it down a little bit, get more atomization and a, and a smoother coat of paint on. I'm starting to work on the workshop. This is the old panel right here that I've taken out and I've only have one circuit running right now, uh, one 20 amp circuit that controls the lights in this room and that room and one plug just got this opened up Still nice and wet everything in there is wet. Nothing has started to dry or cure uh, except for areas that are exposed to the air Let's see here. What are we gonna Mix with this looks like the proper mixing device well, As I said in the one of my older videos, I don't know how old it is, is I taped these hinges off because this door is, it's just dust, basically. Dust and some glue. And if you take these screws in and out only a few times, once, twice, they lose their bite. And you have to do things like jamming toothpicks and gluing golf, golf tees in there. Uh, what's weird is I didn't notice this until just now. Every one of these hinges is missing the top screw. So in the factory, not only ran out of screws, it's probably a Corona door. They're missing the top screw. So this is the inside. I had to cut the bottom so that it would fit the whole, the, that wall area. Now, a lot of times on certain doors, I will glue back in this edge piece here that was on the bottom. I'll cut it and actually glue it back in here. And I'll pop this piece of foam out um, this application doesn't need that. Oh, I'm sitting on my miter saw here. As you can see, it's just foam. Foam and this little, uh, God, what is that, a fiberboard, kind of MDF. It's pressed into a mold. You can see how that, that looks like from the inside. Pressed into a mold, glued together with foam and some more MDF fiber around the perimeter. And that's it. Let's see, way on up in there. So some of you might be thinking, why the heck did he take that home to paint? And it makes sense that you would think that. 
Um, well, I, I like to stay busy. So I work usually till two, three o'clock in the morning, every morning or every night. Oh, geez. So I can take this door home with me, uh, paint it in my, my workshop and stay productive. Pretty easy to move just this lightweight hollow core door around. I also painted the, uh, the door casing. Bada boom, bada bang. Not sure if you guys can see, but there's a, a bit of a bow here. I don't have this top nailed in at all yet, but we've got a bow and you can see it on the other side. And should bring you over here to show you what I'm looking at. There we go, that's a nice, perfectly straight line. I'm going upstairs to cut the drywall in the garage. Keeping it simple, um, I, I know a lot of people would like to see me make U-shaped cuts. If this was an exterior door where there was a heavy door, a self-closing fire door to the garage, I would agree with you. But for this low usage, extremely lightweight door, it doesn't make sense for me to, to do the U-shaped cut. So we're going to stripe up, a stripe up, and a little piece across here, mud it all in, texture it, you will never ever see a crack. I'm gonna do, do a little bit of hot mudding here in a second, but what I wanted to do was kind of feather this edge here. I got a, a serious quarter of an inch of mud built up there. I am gonna have to pull all these shelves off uh, to get this to feather out to around here. Family show here. You guys get a good good view of what that looks like. You got some nice bright lights behind you. It's a very fine fiberglass mat. Hey, this is just going to be a light second coat. It's ready to sand for texture, but just in case I'm not seeing something, I'm just going to give it a light skim over a few areas that would take a little bit more feathering while sanding. For those of you who are curious, no, I did not install these shelves. I've got a good video out on the Handyman Business YouTube channel about customer expectations and exceeding customer expectations, but also how you lose money when you do too much work. Too much work that you weren't paid to do. Might wanna go check that out. Oh yeah.
Every time I use these, I get questions about why I don't use a real hopper and air compressor. Uh, the reason is, it is a pain in the ass to get out the compressor, mix up the mud, the cleanup, mainly the cleanup, it is so time consuming. You need to get one, I've got two. If I'm gonna do just a, a small section here and across the top and down, I'm using a $20 can of spray texture. That's right, this is uh, 18, $19 and some changes, probably over $20 after taxes. Most important thing, you can ruin this like that if you have this little thing in the wrong position. You gotta force it and make sure it clicks all the way down. If it's up in this position there and you squeeze this thing, it, it's broken. It's friggin' broken. Trust me, I've made that mistake before. So make sure this is all clicked down here. Another thing to note about this product is it is water-based. It cleans up with a wet rag, a sponge, a washcloth, whatever you want to use. On this edge here, I used a wet cloth to make sure that this was a perfect feathered edge from the old to the new. Make sure it's unlocked. Never put it at the wall first. Always put it on a piece of cardboard, or I always do it on some of the masking area. You can see the difference. You get a quick burst of a quick shot out, and then you get to see what you're working with. I've got a medium to light over here. Uh, the other project I did on the other wall there had a, ha a w had a wall that was extremely heavy. Took a lot. So that looks looks just about right. 